my personal belief is that this is a sea change. There is no going back to status quo. If one company tries, they're going to be met with 10 others that have maintained the experiment. So I think we've turned a corner. When I fled the office in March 2020, I left a half empty coffee cup on my desk like a slob and I left my gym bag under my chair. I remember thinking, who knows what's next, but I'll come back for that later. Turns out I would have to buy new running shoes. This past year flipped all of our lives upside down. And now that vaccinations are proving to be incredibly effective, they're flipping upside down once more. These days, I know how to quarantine, how to wear a mask, how to socially distance, and how to work from home during a global pandemic. But experts say that we failed to face the pandemic head on and will now need to live with the coronavirus being eternally endemic which means that with many companies, mine included, bringing workers back to the office this fall, I now need to learn how to work from the office during a global pandemic. In April 2020, 70% of Americans were working remotely, according to Gallup. Today, that share is closer to 56%, even though 61% say they'd prefer to be working from home. And now workers are quitting their jobs at the highest rates in 20 years. In fact, it's the highest rate ever reported by the BLS. 4 million people quit their jobs in April 2021 alone. My name is Abigail Johnson Hess. You all can call me AJ. I'm a multimedia reporter for CNBC Make It. And this is What's Next. If anyone can tell us about the future of work, it's Brian Well, Google's Vice President of People Analytics, and Amy Webb. Amy is the founder of the Future Today Institute. She's also a professor of strategic foresights at NYU Stern School of Business and a visiting fellow at Oxford University Said School of Business. She's a quantitative futurist, which means she uses data to build models to find emerging trends and then uses that info to find plausible outcomes. So I wanted to talk to get her take to see if the changes the pandemic made on work culture would actually stick. Hey there. How's it going? It's going well. How are you doing? I recently moved, but uh... I'm currently thinking about whether or not I should unpack my, my formal wear for work. My boss is preparing me to come back to the office. I feel like I have to relearn how to do that all over again. This has been on a lot of people's minds. Um, what does the future of the office look like? Uh, what does that footprint look like? Where is it? What's the work from home configuration for teams? And how do we manage our re-entry into the world of the physical and the living? Mm -hmm. A lot of companies that are allowing hybrid work aren't allowing people to, t to work from home Monday and Friday. So what does that tell us about the future of transit? Um, it means Tuesday through Thursday is gonna be hell for anybody who's trying to commute with a car. And what does that mean? Well, that's a signal for local cities, you know, administrations who could right now be adjusting what those mm. traffic patterns look like, but we know they're not doing that, right? So I think we're looking <laughs> for like, there's gonna be gridlock in ways that we just haven't seen before and haven't anticipated. But the changes to the way we work are much deeper than how many days we go into the office or what rush hour looks like. I do think one of the outcomes of COVID is a lot more people working in fractional roles. Sure. So this is somebody who might work for four companies or five mm. companies, giving each one 10 hours a week. And our work relationships will also change we are all going to have to relearn how to socialize and get along with one another, which unfortunately could lead to more conflicts in the office. I'm not comfortable predicting what the future of work is totally gonna to look like. I am absolutely comfortable predicting the prevalence of more and more viruses in our lives, yes. right? <laughs> so what are we gonna do? Are we gonna keep having this debate and this discussion about vaccines? The answer is yes. And in this country, we're gonna wind up with a bifurcation that cuts across weird socioeconomic, religious, educational um, spaces, but is very deeply rooted to misinformation. And Webb says that the fraught political and cultural climate of the past year will not just disappear when we return to the office. We are coming off of the killing of George Floyd. That hasn't been resolved. We have a lot of underlying tensions um, that had nothing to do with the pandemic that we're all going to have to contend with once we're back in each other's presence. Webb says that the next 24 months will be a sort of disorienting phase, a kind of puberty as we awkwardly try and return to the office, mask acne and all. So I spoke with Brian Well. He's the vice president of people analytics at Google, and he's a data guy who constantly thinks about how workers are feeling and what makes workers most productive. And if any company is on the bleeding edge of the future of work, it's Google. 
I wanted to know if productivity didn't drop, why do we need to go back to the office at all? We saw that uh, productivity and performance did actually shift. As we were shifting into new ways of working, we very quickly like geared up our survey infrastructure to reach out to our employees and ask them critical questions along the way. And one of them was a very simple question about productivity. I regularly reach high levels of productivity. And it's a question we had asked in the past in our, in our surveys. And in the first couple of weeks of everyone shifting to working from home, the responses plummeted by 15 points or more. But as Google continued to survey its employees, Brian saw an upward trajectory as his team acclimated to working from home. It didn't take long for productivity to reach pre-pandemic levels. The first thing that we learned is that only talking about productivity really doesn't meet the employee where they're at. Productivity is important, but I will not say to my team, we were amazingly productive, how great it is that we can continue to be productive going forward, because even though that's true, the reaction is, yeah, but can we also talk about the toll it took on me? Can we talk about what I didn't get from my coworkers and from you when we were in this space of not connecting? Where we ended up as a company is uh, offering as much flexibility as we could to enable Google employees to optimize for themselves while also giving teams what they needed. A default option that we think most employees are gonna take advantage of, which is coming into the office three days a week and working from another location two days a week. It lets you do all the things we came to love about working from home while also getting that moment of connection and the ability to do innovative work in person in the office. What, what Google's thinking is the way that's gonna make the most people happy is giving them more control right? It's saying, here's the general framework, but after this crazy year where you felt like you've had control of nothing, we're going to let you control where you work Mondays and Fridays or, or whatever day. So not to get too, you know, philosophical, but, but what do you think that control does for, you know, workers who might be struggling after this past year? For many employees, there was this sort of anxiety about what comes next. So all of the tough decisions that you made to get through the last year, if you feel as though Google can unravel all of that by requiring you to come into the office five days a week, that's a source of anxiety. Control, I think, is actually a sense of relief. When it came to work productivity, where can I do my best thinking? When, where can I do my best coding? Where can I be uh, like do my best work? You've got some people who say from home, some people who say from the office, and almost an equal percentage of them who said it doesn't matter. So wouldn't it be easy if like, if it were nice and simple down the way that you could categorize people into one or the other and it's not that way. Is there a solution for those companies who, who can't kind of go to the end of the earth that it seems like Google's going to, to, to try and make as many people as happy as possible? Yeah, this is one of those things that I don't think money is the biggest issue for many of them. So uh, let me just acknowledge that uh, many Google employees aren't going to get what they want either. Sure. Um, because they might be in a job that requires them to work in a particular location. We are hoping that most people can find what they're looking for, but there are actual role constraints and job constraints and business constraints that, uh, that dictate a little bit. So it's not like we've created this environment where everybody just gets everything that they want. It's complicated. Paint me a picture. What are going to be some of the big changes physically um, to Google's offices? The reasons that people need to be in the office like when you really get down into what kind of work are they doing, um, a lot of it is around collaboration, innovation, the social part of work. And so what Google is doing now is like looking at our workspace and say, how can we optimize it for those kinds of activities? Google's new configuration reads as if it were written in a science fiction novel. At Google's new campfire spaces, in-person attendees sit in a circle interspersed with impossible to ignore large vertical displays so virtual participants are on the same footing as those physically present. Think Star Trek. Brian says we simply are not going back to what work was like before, in part because companies like Google still need to compete for talent. And after workers survived the past year, many put a premium on flexibility and control. My personal belief is that this is a sea change. It, there is no going back to status quo. If one company tries, they're going to be met with 10 others that have maintained the experiment. So I think, I think we've turned a corner, an exciting one.